and then also going to record to this computer. And it looks like we are recording. Are you ready to go? We don't have to start, but... Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's do this. Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming back. Uh, I'm joined with my great friend, comedian Rodney Norman, um, somebody who I really admire. He always makes me laugh. <laughs> and in these times, he has the best Facebook statuses. What can I say? What's going on, Rodney? Uh, just uh, sitting back and enjoying making people laugh for making no money at it just like i did before so this is good <laughs> yeah yeah i feel the same way about that nothing's changed in that department right <laughs> at least at least now i can pretend like i had a career yeah i know right well this is the thing now with social media you could make yourself look like any comedian you want on a green screen you know you're good <laughs> oh yeah absolutely that's that's kind of this. This just brought us all to the same level. Nobody's doing anything. Yeah, it's crazy. Only, it's it's almost as if somebody thought, "Hey, let's take all of society and make them uh, one cohesive unit, and then uh, eliminate the caste system, and then bring everybody out of the caste system into a new world." <laughs> It's it's weird how that works. Yeah, it is. It's weird how it all happened by coincidence too. I mean, I would have never thought all this would happen, and then we would be facing a new world so quickly. Uh, it's crazy, right? Amazing. Just just how it all just happened, you know. Just all, just you know. Yeah, that just I, one. <laughs> no, here we are. That's what I find craziest of all. It's like, I, you know, the hubris. I, I don't know if hubris is the right word. I don't know what it is, but it's just uh, um, for this all to happen out of nowhere randomly. <laughs> you know, it's like we must be special. We must be a special kind of people. You know what I mean? Like, we must be the chosen ones. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if this is still a show anymore. No. Uh, so, what what have you been doing to keep yourself sane? Because it's it's a pretty rough time. I see a lot of people losing their minds out there. I felt that a little bit about myself, but I I started to get back to humor, and that's what saved me. So, what what have you been up to? If, I, I think I've, I've gone back and forth to where I'm just kind of obsessed with it. You know, and I'm watching everything, watching you know, every, everything I can find about COVID, where it originated from, all the doctors talking about it, and just kind of obsessed with it. And if, at some point in time, you just got to step back and go, uh, you know what, I, I, need, I need to just go write some bad puns. <laughs> you know? I know what you mean. Yeah. Ugh. And it's just, it's just, it, it, it's all anybody's talking about. Meanwhile, you know, the rest of the world's going to hell. And there's other crap going on. Syria's. It's just, it's just insane the crap that people are getting away with right now. Yeah, that's that's a crazy. It's so true. I mean, um, the all the wars in the Middle East. Yeah, Syria is a big one. Afghanistan, kind of. There was supposed to be a peace deal, but that was uh, so. That was so terrible. That was just for, for later for the history books. Be like, we wrote a peace deal. <laughs> Oh yeah, that, and then it fell thing. apart. We don't know what happened. Well, we just you know we just we just kind of missed it and didn't want to give up and didn't want to stop yet. So we just kept fighting. You know, we're not fighting hard, though. That's you know that's the important thing. We're not killing as many people. So because you know COVID. <laughs> so and then what? I, I mean, look at Syria. What, it, Israel, uh, this is the amazing thing to me. Nobody saw Israel has been like routinely going into Syria and fighting with Iran, and it's not even making any news at all. I'm like, <laughs> this is <laughs> these are weird times that we're living in. Stuff going on, and we're all just focused about whether or not you know somebody should get arrested for go getting a haircut. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I always felt like the media was a big circus anyway, and there were always a 
giant distraction from what was really going on. You get these things that would come up, and now it's like their circus. This is like their three ring. They are loving it. Everything has to do with COVID. It doesn't matter what else is going on. It doesn't matter that Trump, you know, says that Venezuela, uh, they says says that they're anarcho or narco terrorists while he's in while Trump's in Colombia while you know he has all his forces in Colombia. He's calling another person a narco terrorist. Uh, but no one has a you know no one's reporting on that. It's all about oh my god, did you know that a cat got COVID nineteen? <laughs> I know it's. A cat and uh, <laughs> you see that uh, oh what was the the there was a an African country I forget I forget the guy's name uh, but anyway he had, they the, the World Health Organization sent him all these uh, tests for COVID nineteen oh, right yeah. and so he starts they started testing him they're like almost everybody's got COVID nineteen he's like this doesn't make any sense so then he starts testing like oranges and um bananas and every and, and it's like 90 percent uh every 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 single thing that they tested had COVID 19. i mean he was just like we can't even trust these tests i mean we got onions coming down with with this thing yeah it was so, uh there's oh go ahead go ahead oh you go ahead you, you found it yeah i was gonna say it was uh in tanzania it was a a pawpaw fruit and a goat came back positive. Uh, and so, yeah, what... you know, I, I, I'm going to put the link. If anyone's watching this video, I'll put the link under so you can see that it's real, that we're not just making this up. Yeah. But it's been it's been fun for, you know, I, I think I'm a natural conspiracy theorist. I just I just love, even though I don't necessarily fall into all of them, but I love studying. I love looking into what they're doing and seeing how they're. <laughs> it's like a, I don't know. I just enjoy it. My mother was uh, was crazy uh, growing up, and so she thought the Russians were always coming to get us. And, you know, so I always, I just always had that conspiracy minded idea all the time. So I'm always looking for them, and I just I love the, the crazier the better. I just I just enjoy getting into it and every once in a while you come across something that you're like okay this this has some merit especially when it keeps going you know the same theme keeps coming back then you go okay this is not a conspiracy there's something going on here you know what i mean this isn't a theory this is taking place and that's what's so funny about this all these all these things that we've heard all of a sudden it's like you know it's the way it's just right out there everybody can see it everybody knows it and it's like well, you either believe it or not. I mean, there's no. It's crazy, and it's it's fun. I'm I'm just having a great time with this whole thing. <laughs> oh yeah, it it's it's <laughs> the conspiracy things are crazy because there are so many. Like I've talked to so many people about it, and I'll have anybody on my show to talk about whatever as long as they're coherent. And um, it's amazing when you look into it deeper and deeper. Like I had somebody on. Her name is Raphael O'Neill, and she's from New Orleans. And she talks about how weather is controlled. And I watched a bunch of her videos and looked at a bunch of other stuff. And it's like, you know what? It's hard to refute what she's saying, you know, and especially when the government admits stuff. So, I mean, there is some crazy things out there, uh, you know, and that's I try to tell people that. And the the, the crazier, I don't know, it's the, it just sounds fan, t the more fantastical, the crazier you sound. You know, it's nuts. But I'm like, I'm just looking at facts over here. I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's not like I believe it like. I, until I would see it, you know, but if it was true, it's not going to surprise me either. You know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it, it, something I've always told people. I says, well, you got to understand the government can do a whole lot more than you know they can do. And the reason is if they, if you knew what they were capable of doing, there would be laws against it. But if it's still in that science fiction era idea, it's like, oh, there's no way they could do that. Well, then nobody's going to try to stop them from doing it. Yeah, it's genius. You know, it's it really is. It's 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 a brilliant scheme, but it's it's like, oh, well, you know. I mean, if you knew, if you if you had a way of you know robbing a bank without anybody knowing that you robbed the bank, or being able to know that you had the ability to do whatever it was you did, you know, through a computer program or whatever, would you tell people you had that ability? Would you would you go say, oh, by the way, I can 
I can uh, I, I, I can go into any bank and throw all their money and or you know I can steal a dollar from every single person they don't ever notice it if you had that ability would you tell people you had that ability of course not you know and that's that's sort of that's where I, I think what's happened with with the government and a lot of other organizations is that they realize wow if we just give all this technology to the world uh, they're just going to use it themselves if we just have it and they don't even know it's available we, we can do whatever the hell we want yeah and I, people are starting to come to grips with that happening on so many levels and, yeah uh, I'm I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, best apocalypse ever. I'm following this guy. His name is James True, and he keeps saying that. He's like, best apocalypse ever. It's so hilarious. I think what you say is is spot on because, oh man, um, people also because they project their own goodness onto others, and they can't see that other people are bad. And I was just having a conversation with somebody about this. You know, we're both DJs, and we both had like a shady, you know, questionable past. <laughs> We've done some things that we're not proud of, but having done that now, you know, I've, I've kind of had like this second awakening and a perspective shift in my life. I could see how my behaviors are wrong and it was bad, but I also am still that person who did those things. So I know that there are people out there who are evil. You know, I never did anything really that bad, but I've had some dark thoughts, everybody, you know, what everybody does. Uh, I think that just repressing it is, um, is what's bad, but yeah, people, they don't, so they project their goodness on other people and they can't see that other people would do that. Um, you know, and that, that's one thing. And then the other thing is like, um, I always hear is, well, how can everybody keep a secret? And I always say it's, I think it's really, most people are just motivated by money and they, they just let money do their things. And the people who might know anything about conspiracy or what's really going on, those are the ones that might not, money might not be the ultimate motivator. You know, it's that power thing that they're really worried about. So you know, we could see it in movies. You know, we could see Lord of the Rings. You could watch it a thousand times and people still won't understand that. It's like, you know, you can't have that power because you watch Lord, you watch Game of Thrones and you're like, oh, yeah, I could see all this scheming going on and this craziness. But, you know, there's power that we're talking about that has nuclear weapons. That's more powerful than a dragon. You know what I mean? Like, what would you do for that power? Think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that was kind of the, the, the point of Lord of the Rings is just that if you give absolute power to anyone, it will corrupt them. I mean, and that, that was the whole point of that whole, the whole thing is anybody has that much control, they get drunk on that power. And you, you can see it now. I mean, you, it, People, well, people are salivating over the kind of power that they can hold. I mean, just look at some of the governors now. They're making up some of the dumbest rules for what? I mean, why would you stop somebody going to a beach? Every scientist, including the World Health Organization, said the, the virus doesn't exist. Does, it will die at 80 degrees. Sunlight kills it almost instantaneously. The safest place for you to go is the beach. To get away from the virus, I mean, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't be closing the beaches. You should open them up and encourage everybody to go. Yeah, yeah. Not the healing properties that are in the ocean and uh, improving your uh, your your general psychological health and everything of being in the waves and all these benefits of being mixed to the water, and being in nature. And this is what they're closing it down. I mean, you can get arrested for going on a on a on a bike path. For a walk in California right now, it's insane what they're doing, and it makes no sense whatsoever. None whatsoever, as far as fighting this off this virus. And just, but it just comes from you know all of a sudden they got this power, and now they're just doing everything they ever wanted to do because they're like, oh hey, I can suspend everybody's rights, sweet. And now they're just going crazy, and it's, uh, it's 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 scary at one point, but at the same time. It's really fun because, like, life's been kind of boring, to be honest with you. So it's it's cool, you know, because you study history. You go back, you study World War II. You study these things, these remarkable events, and you think, man, what would it be like to be there? And now we're right in the middle of a war. <laughs> Fucking is, smack that, baby. Cool. 
everyone's like, when I can't wait to get back to normal. And I'm just looking at him like, wow, really? Like, I don't think you know how this works. Have you ever opened up a, a government history book as bad as they are? You should at least get it out of that. But have you ever opened up a real book with some real history, somebody's personal account that was there? Oh, my God. I remember I was listening to the Civil War podcast, two different ones, and they're it was from like a libertarian, you know, anti kind of government point of view. So they, they were pulling no punches. They wanted to get to the meat of it. Both of these guys. It was really good. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. Like you pretty much figure out that Abraham Lincoln was probably the worst American president ever. And when you say that, I was like, oh, you're terrible. What are you racist or what are you this? It's like, nope, nope. Listen, read the facts and you'll see that over a million Americans died. I don't care how many they say died in that war. Over a million Americans died. I don't know how many horses, and he could have stopped that war at any point. And it's like he wanted that war, you know. And it was had nothing to do with freeing the slaves. That's why I tell people, I'm like, yeah, he when he finally did free the slaves, he didn't free him. He said you could fight for me. So imagine being a slave, right? And then they go, here's your choice: you could stay here as a slave, or you could fight in one of the worst battles. That's a meat grinder ever. And if you die, you're gonna live on the battlefield with your entrails out, like for three days. <laughs> okay, sign me yeah. up. You know. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, when you when you realize that when one of his advisors was like, "Look, if you free the slaves, you you're going to destroy them financially. This is this will just rip them apart. They'll never be able to revolt again. They'll never. They're going to be destitute." And Lincoln's like, "Well, okay, that sounds good. You know, it was, I, I, when, I need him for my army." <laughs> I mean. Well, he was, you know, I mean, the party did start as the anti-slavery party. They did see this. Uh, most most everybody who was involved in the war really saw it as an end to slavery. Yeah, that's what was worse. That's the worst part because they were using that, um, in my opinion, they were using that intent. You know, it was like the path to hell was paved with those good intentions, you know. Yeah, and then it was like, oh, okay, well, we're winning, I guess. Well, okay, well, I guess we'll go in. Well, there is some benefit to us all. Okay, let's do it. You know, I mean, it was, there was, a, there was, I mean, you got to consider all of the, the different politics and everything. Oh, yeah, stuff. yeah. Thing. I'm just, I mean, you know, was, letting people know that when things go wrong like that, it's not like you would imagine. Like, we don't, people are like, we want a revolution. We want it. I'm like, you don't want a revolution. And you don't want it. No, you don't. You want to just, like, I keep telling people, it's. It's so easy. All you got to do is stop and say no. If everybody stopped and said no yeah. and went about their day, that's all you got to well, do. <laughs> uh, you know, I was I was encouraged by the stuff that's going on in California. You know, there was this, they had the beach closed and they had a bunch of cops standing out there. And, uh, you know, a big line of people are kind of standing right at the end of the, 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 the boardwalk or the walkway or whatever to, go on the beach and finally one lady was like screw this and she starts running out there with a, a Bennington 76 flag and yelling <laughs> you know and then they were the cops started to surround her to arrest her and uh, other people were like oh you oh no screw this and so they all just start, started walking out on the beach and they're like well if you're gonna arrest her you gotta arrest me and then pretty soon the whole beach was just flooded and the cops were just like screw this and they just went and sat down i'm like that's the kind of power we run and that's the thing that bothers me is that we're the ones who this is our country these people these leaders so to speak they're supposed to work for us we aren't their slaves we aren't their we aren't their subjects there are they're supposed to serve us and if they aren't serving us it's our right to go kick them out of office that's why i hope boy i hope that's Lawsuit after lawsuit just gets, <laughs> just takes these governors down because some of this stuff is just so, so, oh, it's just, it's, it's disgusting to watch. But at the same time, it's also exciting. To find. Yeah, it, you're right. It is. I think that's a right frame of mind to keep also something like that to met, to remember, you know, it's going back to Lord of the Rings because I just love that movie apparently. But um, when Frodo says, you know, I wish I wasn't, I wish we wasn't, or I wish I wasn't here to see these times or something. He's basically saying, I don't want to, why can't it be peaceful? And he's like, yeah, everybody who ever lived to see those times had said such things. But, you know, we got to pull it together. Like, it doesn't matter what you want. It's not what you want. It's how you're going to act, you know, when the shit goes down. You are the one who has to make this decision. What, what decision are you going to make? And, you know, you can hide 
you know, go hide and pretend it's not happening or, oh, I'm going to let the experts take care of it. But, yeah. I mean, it's like most people's logic is based entirely on fallacies. You know, well, what does everybody else think? Oh, what's the emotional aspect of it? Oh, well, what do the experts think? Well, you can get, look at look at what the experts say. They're all over the place. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Whatever you want to believe, you can go out there and find experts that support oh, your position. Yeah, for sure. That's the biggest thing I've tried to te- I, I try to teach my kids is that you know, you have if you're going to look at something, you got to look from every angle. And also I've also told them like, you know, it's like your audio seems to be cutting out a little bit. I don't know if is it still Maybe can you turn it up a little bit or me? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, no problem. Uh I while you're if you could still hear me, I'll just um well, I can hear you. Great, yeah. Yeah, it sounds well maybe when you're in front of it it sounds better. Maybe that's what it was like, cuz you were I was dropping it a little bit. Is that good? Yeah, it's still dropping a little, little bit. Hmm. Everybody. It could just be my headphones. I mean, it could sound good because I have you turned way up. So, Okay. Um, I have you on a separate audio track anyway. I could just turn it up if I have to. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like I'm screaming on my end. <laughs> okay. It's the freaking uh, frack show, everybody. <laughs> Well, you know, it was fun when I was in high in high school. I was in college. I was in debate. Did you ever get into debate? Uh, not oh. professionally, but I have debated a bunch. <laughs> okay. Well, I I did I did it for you know all through high school, and then I had a, a scholarship to college was in debate. Oh wow! And uh, you know, public speaking, but mostly debate. And the thing I liked about that was that you had to, because you didn't know what side of the issue you were going to debate. So you had to look at both sides. And because of that, but that's the, that's my dog in the background looking, drinking out of his bowl in case you're wondering. Um, <clears throat> but you had to look at both sides of an issue um, and you had to be prepared to defend either side, you know, and so that's one thing that I've kept throughout my whole, just every, everything that I look at. I try to look at both sides. I will go to the extreme. I will look at the crazy, weird conspiracies. I'll go and see what the experts are saying. I read everything. And somewhere around there, you start to kind of, you get an idea of what's the real story. And one thing I've always found is, you know, it's like they're, they're always trying to, debunking whatever can spill the well like the pandemic video you had that gal you interviewed right? yeah i got very lucky through a certain cer- uh, set of circumstances right place right time and just my general overall good demeanor you know my friendly demeanor i made friends with this guy online and then he was like produced a couple of uh, documentaries and knew somebody and knew somebody so we put together a couple of these round tables and i was able to speak with Dr. Judy Mikovits and uh, Dr. Butar and Mikovits was the one that was just on that pandemic thing. Yeah, yeah, and it it, it was funny to me because almost all of the uh, debunking videos <clears throat> that came out, they didn't address anything that she actually said. Yeah. They only just went after her, and I'm like, okay, the thing you always look at is not what they what not what they're debating, but look at what they're avoiding. Look at what they're not talking about. And that's where, you, <clears throat> that's the stuff they're worried about. Because her, you know, her, her whole history, I mean, it's extremely well doc- <coughs> documented <coughs> about the whole controversy, the everything, well, you know. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, no problem. <coughs> but you watch, you watch what they're upset at. And they all say the same thing. Oh, she's she's a fraud. She's a, you know what I mean? She's been discredited. There's no <coughs> no reason to even. I'm not even going to entertain discussing this video any further. You know, they just really very dis- <coughs> sorry, <coughs> very dismissive. I think it's the five Gs are getting. Was, they're turning on thicker. I was just gonna say. You know, the other thing. While you take a quick drink, I'll say is um, somebody told me this, and it's great. My friend Rob told me he goes. 
you know, they could say all they want, but if her book is being published and it's out there, everything in her book has to be true because if it wasn't true, they would sue the pants off of that publisher. And you can't just publish something in a book like that saying that it's fact when it's not fact. So, you know. Yeah, it's like I say, always look at what they avoid talking about. And especially when they do those dismissive, you know, I've seen video after video going, uh, I can't believe I even have to talk about this. Yeah. Obviously, if you think uh, there's any credibility to this in any way, shape, or form, you are a complete and total idiot. <laughs> and I'm out of here. You know, it's like, okay, wow, way to, way to go. That was that was informative and interesting. So, so it's like I said, this is just such a great time to be alive. Yeah. Watch. Oh, yeah. Also, I heard one person say that she was doing it to get rich off of the book. And I'm like, obviously, you don't write books. And B, I guess she started giving away for free after that. I'm like, yeah, she's going to get rich off of a book. What is this, 1965? Like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you, you write a book to give you, to get people to watch videos. Yeah, exactly. That's what you write a book for nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's only, I mean, really, it is. Most people who write these books, the only reason they do it is just to give them some sort of credibility. It's like even even what less than 70% of people actually buy the book, actually ever read it. Mm -hmm. I can attest to that because I've got. Oh, yeah. I'm so guilty about that. I could pick up books. But then again, there are some books that I found and then they're really interesting. So, I mean, I try not to be too hard on myself. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. So, uh, how have you been doing through all this? Uh, well, you know, I've actually been. Uh, let's. I, this is how we could put it. Financially, it's probably like the worst. I mean, I've been in a couple of tighter spots, but it's pretty tight. But I don't care, whatever. Um, and then, but as far as doing this, it's just blowing up because I was able to talk to those guys, and that was really cool. I didn't get to talk too much on the first one I did on the second one, but it was amazing just being able to be a part of it because the information was so great. But the shows that I've been doing on the side with other friends, it's been going really well. And having been on the show with those people, some people, like, it floods over. So now instead of my videos getting, like, 50 views, I get, like, 200 views sometimes. And some of them get, like, a couple hundred views. So it's exciting. I get, like two comments you know what i mean so i feel like i'm moving up you know it's not like i'm like wow i'm famous but it's it's really cool um i've noticed though a lot of them or not a lot but it's it, maybe a good amount or bots of the especially on youtube it's really crazy youtube and twitter and this is something that i remember i used to watch, listen to joe rogan a lot and he had people on i forget what it was it was either on his show or another one where they were talking about these farms of like twitter bots they would have in like india or china and some of them, I guess, are supposed to be like AI, where they would just get on and they would, you know, attack somebody or whatever. And to see it happen is crazy. You can even go, there's some certain Facebook pages, you go on these, and these people are having these conversations. And you can even see, like I said, on Twitter. And I'm like, is this a real conversation between two people? And then all these comments underneath, you know, but it's another one of those things that when you talk about, it, you sound a little crazy. But I, I don't really think it's that far fetched. I could see that happening, especially if you want to shape public opinion. Um, you know, I guess they, uh, the political parties or whatever tried claiming that was how Trump, how Trump got elected. But, um, yeah, so I guess it is still in, in the possibility. Uh, but no, overall though, I guess I got away from what we were saying, but, um, I've been having a good time with it really. I mean, it's, it's tough though, because at first, you know, cause this is my wheelhouse really, this whole conspiracy thing. Like I was on to this from the first case when it was reported, I was like, oh, here they go again. They're trying their shit, you know, and I was watching it happen. And I'm watching people getting sick and then I'm watching these videos like and they were talking about this thing called the Vent 201, which you might be familiar with. But I told a guy at the gas station who never heard of it and <laughs> today. <laughs> no, I'm crazy. But uh, so in case anyone's watching this and still is unaware, in October of 2019, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the World Economic uh, Forum, the WHO, the CDC of the United States and China, and a bunch of people got together to simulate. They had like a round table kind of thing to simulate a virus breakout, like a big pandemic. And it was a new neuro, uh, corona or new novel coronavirus that they, you know, uh, simulated was going to happen. And it was merely a little a coincidence. merely a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. 
So in a lot of the same people, you could so you could go and watch this video. It's up. It's five hours long. I didn't watch all five hours, but you can go watch it. And all these people come in and they report at different times in the pandemic. And they'll say, okay, this is like week two. And they show a, a broadcast. And it's like an actual news broadcast that they recorded. And it's this a lot of the stuff they're saying is stuff they're saying now, which is spooky. A lot of the people that were talking in there are the ones that are talking now. But the thing is, they didn't address that they learned. So whatever they learned at that pandemic exercise, is not like they're putting it into play. It's like they're starting again at zero, which is just creepy to me. So I went crazy at first with this, but then I got to a point where I'm like, I got to get back to my center. Um, because before all this, I was studying with like psychology and uh, it was still conspiratorial because it was like a cult psychology. So it was, it, it's like, I wrote uh, an article about it. It's basically a psychology that people in power, like a small group of people will use against a larger group of people. Like how are they able to control them when such a large group of people can just step on them like they're ants. So Mm -hmm. I I was just very fascinated by that. But then this came into play and I see a lot of the same aspects, you know, and then I started to focus on politics more because I never really, I stopped watching all a lot years ago, the news and I'm watching like Governor Newsom from California up there. And when he's talking, he's doing these things with his hands, like these mudras. And I'm like, is this guy a wizard? What's going on? You know, and I'm like, maybe I'm just crazy. But then everybody talks and they do it. And I'm like, uh. so uh, that's I, so like I said, I was still going a little crazy. But I, I got back to my center and I started to get back to what I do best, which is make terrible puns and tell jokes and, and comment on what I see is going on. So I feel like that's getting me back. And um. I made some good friends along the way. It's it's crazy because a lot of times when you're into stuff like this, nobody around you, it's tough because no one was really into it. So I've met other people online and, you know, we'll have like group discussions or whatever. And it's crazy how we're all like thinking or not the same exact thing, but that's the thing. I found people who are willing to look at facts for what for what they are and not worry about their belief system. You know, I came across this thing. It's called the trivium where you take your facts and then you run it through, uh, I'm sorry, you take your grammar and then you run it through um, the logic and then you have your rhetoric. Whereas a lot of people in this society, they put their uh, rhetoric first. So it's, it's always their mindset, their dogma, and they filter their facts through that. And if it doesn't fit, then they throw the facts out and then they spew out only the facts. So I found other people who are willing to do this and it's amazing. We don't all agree on everything, you know. Some of them think that insects might be running the world. <laughs> Which is like fascinating, but I'm like, ah, it's where you lose me, maybe. But we're gonna do a podcast about it, so I'll let you know. <laughs> well, insects. Um, well, yeah, there's the, the the sort of the hive mind that the insects are using to control the ether, basically, of our thoughts. And I've even, yeah, in the five G is actually trying to counter the effects of. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've. Uh, <laughs> yeah got pretty deep that 5g <laughs> one man that one is you know that i keep warning people about that one because and what i mean warning i, I mean warning people who are lining up saying that that's the devil because i think that the term 5g is like one of these things where it, it's all inclusive and i think maybe part of it might be harmful but they're rolling out all the stuff that might not be as harmful now so you're gonna look really crazy going for it you know and then when they do roll out this other shit like this millimeter wick technology it's supposed to be like 60 gigahertz i don't know everyone says it's like a weapon um Mm. that's what i try to tell people i'm like you gotta i i don't know i i just say i said you're 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 not you're never going to show your full hand you're never going to say oh yeah here's here's everything i can do yeah um exactly so (laughs) Yeah, it's like I tell people, yes, there is a safe way to do 5G. There is a safe way to have, you're just increasing bandwidth. You're increasing people's uh, uh, speed on the Internet. Not not that we've ever really needed it more. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, you know, I mean, I mean, happy with, oh, two and a half milliseconds faster. <laughs> but what it is, is that it's it, what 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 they have to do. It's like when they, uh, they had analog. You know, when it was 1G, 2G, uh, you had analog signal. And then when they switched to the digital signal, it made all analog basically useless to the system. And that's what they're going, the the 5G, the biggest thing with this is that it's able to basically make 
all other bandwidths, they can just basically just eliminate them. So now everybody's going to have to go and get a new phone to be able to even connect to the network at all. And that's one of the things that they can accomplish. Right now they've set it up so that everybody can get on there, but pretty soon it'll make it so that basically if you don't have a 5G phone, your phone will not work. Uh, that's going to be, yeah. And then what comes with that? That's the scary part. Like, what is this phone capable of that is, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's already amazing what they can do. I mean, you know, it's like, I, 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 I it was funny because uh, I remember, you know, and the whole thing about what, they, they can listen to your conversation with your phone off. They can still hear what you're talking about. And I was telling my wife about it. And I was saying, well, look, you, you know, if we just start talking all of a sudden about going to Kentucky Fried Chicken, we want to go get some chicken. I have no idea. I want, I'm, I'm interested in Kentucky Fried Chicken. You interested in Kentucky Fried Chicken? As soon as we get home, she gets online, gets on Facebook, boom, ads for Kentucky Fried Chicken search. She just, she freaked out. She was like, holy cow. And I said, yeah, just, it, it, they, they have that technology. They can do this. It's amazing. But like I said, they don't, they don't want you to know everything. So they'll, they'll, roll, they'll roll things out in layers. You get used to it. 5G was like, there's nothing wrong with 5G. It's working great. My phone's going to work better. And then, you know, incremental. It's all, it's all incremental. Yeah, yeah. And then more people, then instead of like, what percentage and a percentage of people getting cancer just starts to slowly go up. Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, and then they can always find something else to blame. Them. Yeah. Like, like a virus. A virus. You know, I, <laughs> There's a whole fascinating, uh, I don't know if you know the theory <clears throat> about terrain, uh, the terrain theory versus germ theory and all that discussion. Have you, are you privy to that at all? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure if anyone wants to learn more about that, you can check out Dr. Angie, Andy Kaufman, Kaufman, Ka wait, Kaufman. I always say that wrong. Kaufman. Kaufman. There it is. I'm terrible. I just think we, you know, the thing is names. I think people don't need names. They just need sounds and for you know i found this thing this is part of uh when i said i had like a perspective shift part of it was i got to know myself better and i i highly recommend it for everybody on this planet to get to know yourself but um i realized that there's different personalities uh it's kind of illustrated in the myers briggs personality test but that's a lot of that mainstream stuff is like mainstream anything else. You don't get the goods. Um, and I found somebody who wrote a book, and there's another guy who's a YouTuber, so he's probably full of shit. But <laughs> he um, he talks all about it, and it's amazing. So I figured out what personality I was, and I looked at all the traits, and I was just like – it was like a heavy burden lifted off my shoulder because I realized that there's certain things – and it's just the way I am. And that doesn't excuse any of my behavior at all. But now I can actually focus on it and work on those negative aspects of myself. But I can allow mm -hmm. myself to feel okay. And it's what a feeling it is. It's it's really amazing. And I feel that if I'm able to do that, right, and if I'm able to learn that about myself, why why aren't, why isn't everybody being taught that? It's not because, it, I mean, it's not a pseudoscience if it works, but you could call it a pseudoscience if you don't want people to look into it. You know, like, I don't know. Because <laughs> it's really amazing. Because if you learn other people's personalities, then you could, you could, um, you don't have to excuse their behavior, but then you can empathize with them. And then you don't have to take it personally when they do something against you. You could just say, well, I get it. And you could still be, you know, anger, whatever you have to do, but you don't have to take it personally. And that doesn't have to be like an insult against your whole character. And that would, oh God, that would like take our civilization up like at least a half a notch, you know. <laughs> well, they, they don't they don't want people to uh, uh, be that thoughtful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you what know, I'm I, starting to find out. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I think that's one of the biggest concerns they have right now with all these kids being at home and being now more influenced by their parents and less influenced by the school system. They're worried that, you know, all of a sudden these kids are going to start, you know, thinking differently than what they've been patterned to think. Programmed? And, Sorry. I, oh, I, I, I coughed. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's really funny. I have friends who are school teachers, and I, I talk to them all the time, and I've, I've expressed uh, my, 
my uh, the satisfaction with the school system, and they kind of they, they they they're there too, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Try to more make it more generalized because we stopped. I mean, it goes down. It's, if you ever if you want to see where what happened to our educational system and why it sucks so bad, look up the the philosophy of John Dewey. And uh, yeah, the Dewey Decimal System. If you're familiar with, if you've ever heard of that, this is the guy that developed it. But he he's the one who really started making education where instead of teaching kids as we used to, we used to teach our kids to free think. We used to teach logic. We used to teach them to look at an issue from both sides and and, and decide how to look at you know what you think is best. We used to teach people that. We used to teach people about being an individual and about you know, the, the ideas of, of, of finding yourself. And then we just completely dropped it all of a sudden. And now all of a sudden it's, you know, the reading, writing, arithmetic attitude of just do what you're told. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. we, logic, we dropped reason completely out of the curriculum. It used to be part of the whole thing. I mean, you had to understand logic to be able to do math correctly. And if you understood logic, math became easier to understand and if you understood math it was easier for you to understand the concepts of science and how how it all relates but once you eliminate uh, eliminate logic and reason the rest of the stuff makes no sense and then you're just going i'll just try to remember the stuff for the test <laughs> and then as soon as you're done you forget it well why did we create a system like that because we didn't want you to learn anything other than show up shut up and do what you're told and that has that's why our education system is a disaster that's why our kids don't think as clearly as they should and, you know you watch all these kids all want to become socialists now they need to get that on their own well i mean they just got there i mean i don't know why as soon as they stop the unemployment, then we won't be there anymore but as long as it's going with those extra 600 hour <laughs> checks i'm pretty sure we're there Oh yeah, that's fortunately. I, I I can't think of what we'd be missing. We got the giant uh, world empire. We got the education system. Uh, well, I, well, that's the other thing. You know, the other part is I've always said. You know, the the biggest and most destructive part of socialism is when the government takes over the means of, of uh, control and the means of production. And it's like, oh man, how are you going to do that? Well, guess what? Here we are. <laughs> government is deciding. Specifically, who gets to work, when they get to work, they decide who's essential. They decide what businesses are essential. Uh, we have farmers throwing away food, plowing over crops, uh, killing off livestock, um, just killing them off and burying them. I mean, it, it's it, it's taking place. It's it's happening, and I don't think this is the full. I think the I think they made a mistake. I think they screwed up because I don't think the dying virus is as deadly as they thought it was going to be. And the fact that there, that there are some drugs that are killing it quickly, that's got them scared. That's kind of pissed them off because they were really going for the vaccine thing. And now that it's not as deadly as they were, now they've got your thing they can to salvage it. But I think they screwed up. I think, I really do think they made a mistake and released it too soon because I, I don't think it was as deadly as they wanted it to be. Well, that's my thought. Uh, yeah, I, I could see that. Um, I think that it doesn't really. I, so I get what you're saying, but if you look at just the results of what's going on on the ground, they're definitely accomplishing their mission. So. Oh a lot done but so far but you're right unless though because in this event 201 everything was under control for the first six months in their simulation that they did in october of 2019 in new york city um six months later in that simulation though it went off the charts so maybe if this is some kind of bioengineered thing or whatever this is like the less lethal thing and then <laughs> They're going to like smack us with a real thing or something a little more dangerous in certain areas. You know, who knows? Yeah, it could, it could be that whole I like, told you so thing. Yeah. You know? I See, I don't like to preach the doom and gloom, though, because I really feel 
that the people who may be controlling this, I feel that they um, have rules of their own. And one of their rules is they need consent. They need you to do it. They need your neighbor to yell at you to put your mask on or to get in your house so you do yeah. it. That's that's my belief. So I don't really want to sit here and say, oh, they're going to do all this stuff and kill You know, I think that um, – I think maybe they're going to try like some kind of round two, but I, I don't know. Maybe it will be deadly. I mean, I, and I'm not putting it past them. I'm not saying – these people who I speak of are not capable of killing thousands of people in the womb because they drop bombs. You know, that's what I also I try to tell people. The amount of killing that's going on in other countries, you know, with just bombs that hit civilians that aren't supposed to, you know, like that doesn't even that what what people are supposed to be dying here with this virus. That's not even close. You know, like I don't I don't know, but yeah. that's to get off track. But yeah. Um, oh, and most and most yeah, of the stuff. Ahead. Um, doesn't get reported at all. I mean, it's just most people have no idea what's going on, in the world, especially in the United States. It's kind of always been one of the things that's bothered me. You know, when you ask them what they think about what's going on in, uh, you know, in Africa or wherever, they have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it's like, a, you know, a prime example uh, back in the, during the, uh, uh, the election with uh, Gary Johnson, who, you know, he, he's running for president. And he's a libertarian candidate. And they said, what do you think about Aleppo? Uh, I'm sure it's a nice place to visit in the summer. Uh, you know, it's like, holy crap. This guy's running for president. <laughs> he doesn't even know what's going on in Syria. You know what I mean? Yeah, never mind your average Joe. Joe. And, so, and that that's the other thing, you know, and why we talk about that, how they, they'll do stuff to cover and keep you from, you know, look over here, look over here. Meanwhile, they're doing all this other shady stuff. But, yeah, I, I agree totally with you that they, they've got to get everybody on board. They got to. I mean, that that's the scariest thing is when they're they're doing these. Uh, oh, report your neighbor. They're trying to kill your grandma. Yeah. How dare they? These selfish people out there just walking around all willy-nilly because they don't care about you. They die. Stick it to them. Let us know. Call the police. Call this information line. <laughs> it's like, how can you, as a human being, ever see that kind of stuff coming through and go, oh, no, this seems perfectly fine. Turn in my neighbors? Well, of course. Well, I mean, it's 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 that's probably the thing that scares me the most about this is private citizens turning in other private citizens who are literally doing nothing nothing the but same thing they're doing two, like two six months ago or whatever you know walking down the street yep yeah now all of a sudden you know you're you're committed have you seen that uh what's his name uh uh kevin james's video no, oh no, I gotta check it out. Um, let's see what it was. I was watching it earlier. It's really funny. Uh, the Kevin James quarantine. Uh, out, it's called Out of Touch, Kevin James short film. He dropped it about five days ago. Okay, I'll and, check it out. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. It's like okay, yeah, this is where we're headed, and this is where <laughs> it's it's. This is how scary it's getting. I mean, I was enlightened, uh, in, in heartened, if you will. I remember when de Blasio in New York set up the hotline saying, turn <laughs> neighbors. And, like everybody flooded it with porn. And... Yeah. <laughs> like dick pics. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That, see, that, that's what shows me that there's people out there that this is what I keep trying to tell people. You don't have to convince your neighbor you don't have to convince everybody what you have to do is get a small uh minority maybe 10 11 percent of people some people said maybe more a little more but if you can in the, those are that that's the people needed to influence the rest the herd because the herd are going to just go along with most people think and it's not even like it's a negative quality that's what i kind of wanted to say you know it's actually a very good quality that humans possess that's being taken advantage of and this is kind of like i would say the sacred feminine and what it is, it's, it's people's willingness and their, just their obligation and the feeling that they feel to take care of people. And they want people to get better. You know, it's, it's the same thing um, when people say the path to hell is 
uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It's that same thing. They're harnessing the good intent of these people, but they're using it for an evil, evil thing, which is to basically tattle on your neighbor to the state, who's then going to come with force. Because when the state shows up, that's all they have, guys. They have a gun, and that's all they're going to, you know, that's what every law is. That's what people don't understand. You know, the result of breaking any law at the end of the day is a, a, a prison cell, you know, a cage, no matter what. Because if, if you're not wearing a mask and they try to fine you and you don't pay the fine, they're going to throw you in jail. And it happened to, that's another really uh, heartening story, is the Dallas salon, the hair salon owner who opened up her salon. Do you know about that whole story in oh, Texas? Yeah, that, that was completely bizarre because, I mean, really what she was supposed to have gotten under the law was a fine was basically to say here here's you got to pay such and such amount of money and you know stop doing it if you keep doing it we're going to continue to find you that was the, that was that was it that was what was supposed to happen what she was supposed to get like a thousand dollar a day fine go about your day but that that judge was like you need to apologize how dare you <laughs> how dare you, you? <laughs> You duly elected officials, you need to let them know that they have power and that you will bow down to them. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm just one my my precious. <laughs> you will go to jail. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? You will break down all of society. <laughs> Do not obey. So I was so excited that the, the was it the governor. The, the Supreme Court was like, oh, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, like that night the lieutenant governor found out and got on Twitter and was like, I'm going to pay her fine because they fined her $7,000 and put her in jail for seven days. And he also said, I will take her time in jail. Just count it as house arrest if that works. And then like the next day, the governor governor was like, no, get her out of jail. And then you're right, the Supreme Court got involved. Like, no, what are you doing? This is Texas. Were you trying to start a riot, Dallas? What are you, well, out of your mind? threw her in jail for contempt of court because she wouldn't bow down and apologize to the city official who shut down her business and threw her in jail to begin with. I mean, it's like, you know, it's sort of like that, uh, uh, excuse me, sir, may I have another? You know, I mean, it was like, what the, how is this happening in America? And so it's it's nice to see that people are fighting back. And you, know, this I, I tell people, say, yeah, all these crazy things are going on. There's a lot of people with a lot of money who wanted to do a lot of horrible things, but you're not powerless. We are not, we, none of us are powerless. We can fight this. We can stand up to this and you can just, you can take care of yourself. You don't need government helping you. You don't need any of this stuff. Just be smart about it. Put some food away so that, you know, if the stores go close, go crazy, have enough stuff at home that you can just write it all out. I mean, it's just, there's things you can do to just, you, you have the power, just enjoy the fact that you're part of all of this wonderful craziness. It's just, I mean, really, you can, you just, you, it's <laughs> upset and afraid about it. Just sit there going, holy cow. This is, this is something they're going to talk about for years. Oh, forever. It's going to be a transformational time. As long as there's humans, they're going to be talking about COVID. <laughs> Yeah, and, and laughing mostly. Yeah, but it's like oh, it's so terrible. You can actually make something of this. You can be part of the story by not getting down. Not, I mean, look at this. I mean, what they're talking about suicide is now just going crazy in a lot of places. In Young some places, too. Yeah, they have more suicides than they do um, actual COVID deaths or any other death. Well, no other deaths exist anymore, but. Um, <laughs> You see, early on, I started, I posted, I said, well, on the bright side of COVID-19, it is the cure for cancer, lung disease, diabetes. <laughs> yeah. Flu. I mean, it's it's really, it's cured so many things uh, other, you know. But, <laughs> but, you know, you don't need to get upset. You don't need to get depressed. And I, and, and I understand it's, it's harder for some people, especially those who are like living paycheck to paycheck. And they're, you know, having to depend on, you know, they they literally have nothing. And yet they're being told, well, if you go outside, you're selfish. If you try to work, you're selfish. Um, it, it's just, it's insane. 
It's absolutely insane. But don't get depressed, man. Just take it for what it is, write it out, and have a good time. I mean, because this is going to end. I mean, yeah, it might end up you going into a prison or a, a, a re-education camp. But even that can be exciting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going to be, yeah. It sure showers with a bunch, bunch of uh, bunch of strangers. That'd be cool, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, it, well, what you said is exactly true because right now, it, it say you think it's going to go the worst possible way. This is the calm before the storm, so enjoy it now because you really don't know what tomorrow holds, especially now. We have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, that was never true, but it's you know it's it's even certainly more not true today or for these times uh, because it, it's just getting crazy. But yeah, that's the thing: the fear. You got to let the fear go. When I let fear go in my life, the fear of my death, I overcame it, and it was just amazing. I'm able to, and it's not like I want to die, but, you know, I realized that the fear of death is what was holding me back most times. That's why a lot of people have a near-death experience, and then they, you know, they leave their shitty job or whatever, and they go out and start comedy, or they go out and do this, or they go out and do that. Mm -hmm. And what you said is so true. If you just can stock some stuff away, just, you got to step your lifestyle down. We, we all have to realize that this is probably going to be a time where our standard of living is going to step down in this country. We, we've been living so beyond our means at the expense of other cultures like China. You know, every time China Chinese people make our stuff for four cents an hour, that builds up. You can call it karma, but it's just going to, what goes around comes around. We're living so high and mighty that eventually it's going to, you know, there's people that are profiting and it's just, uh, it's basically we're not living in accordance with natural law if you look at it that way, but we're, we're having these slaves create stuff so we can live like all live like a king. So if you could start to dial back your own life ahead of this, and I feel like I've been doing it already just, you know, randomly, I guess, but probably not randomly. Like I stopped eating meat toward the end of last year. Like I'll still eat eggs and butter and like fish and stuff, but I'm just slowly getting away from things, you know, like I'm letting my hair grow now. I don't get haircuts. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I hardly do any of the things that I used to do. And just to use my own example for people, yeah, exactly. You just start to step back things, and you don't go out to eat as much. You you start to cook, and if you can start a garden, and then maybe get a couple chickens, and then it doesn't matter what happens, man. And you know what else you should get? Guns, everybody, get guns while you still can. Get all the guns you can. <laughs> That's what I'm no. saying. Oh no. But you should also take this time to like meet your neighbor next door and maybe if you're in a bad spot, maybe try to move to a place where people are a little more uh, interested in community because that's what it's going to be because it's going to be, I feel, it's going to be their solution or, you know, your own solution. And if you rely on their solution, you know, now it's not that good. It's not like the best option, but in the future when they don't care it's it's going to be shitty. Think about like the police for example. You can't you have you can't choose the police. It's not like you call and look in the phone book, phone book. You can't go Google like what police force do I want to call, you know? <laughs> yeah, phone book. Uh what what police force do I want to call? No, you get one and you call them and when they show up, they could end up shooting you. <laughs> like that's happened a lot or your dog and you were the one who called them or they show up to the wrong place or whatever, you know, but I'm just saying mistakes happen, but what I mean is when you have a one size fits all answer then their one size fit all, fits all answer is not going to be good for you. I'll tell you this, my own example, when I was in the Marine Corps, everybody, uh, I was on an aircraft carrier and we were loading boxes on the ship one day and it was food. And I was looking at one of the, the boxes of food was like class D food meant for animal consumption only. And I'm like, that's funny. There's no animals on board. <laughs> like, we don't have animals on the ship. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You get some, you have some eye opening experiences in the middle. <laughs> I got to use that as a joke. I got to remember when this is all over. It just came to me. I forgot all about that one time, like a couple of weeks ago. I was like, oh, yeah. No, I remember one time was, we were in uh, Thailand. And we were there for a uh, uh, military exercise. And the they were, they were having a problem with, revol or with uh, you know, uh, a potential uprising uh, going on in Bangkok. And they were wanted the Marines to go and protect the presidential palace. And they had they called us in. They said, well, there's the, we might be going and protecting this palace. We're like, uh, okay, all right, here we go. 
and they and then they said okay well here's the here's the rules um uh you're not allowed to use any ammunition uh we're going to be issued rubber bullets and you're not allowed to shoot anyone unless you've actually been hit <laughs> by an actual bullet <laughs> like if you're hit with anything other than an actual and it has to be confirmed that it's a bullet like if somebody just throws a rock at you you can't retaliate you can't do anything you just stand your ground and so oh and we were only going to be issued four bullets each make them count <laughs> They give you one real bullet for yourself. No. And they were very clear that if you shoot one of these bullets and it's not justified, you will be court-martialed. So at the end of this briefing, we're all just kind of staring at each other going, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this. In fact, our, 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 I think what happened was the politicians had worked this out and they came and told us this. And as, as they're reading it, the sergeant major is kind of looking at it going, this is bullshit. Are you, are you, are you, is this real? You know? And, and then, uh, shortly after that, the Colonel comes in and goes, yeah, we're not going. <laughs> we're not going. Nice. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, it was like cooler heads. And finally, somebody with sense was like, okay, it's, you know, it's like, I think they got the orders and they were just like, Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Here's the rules of engagement, which you always get before, you know. And you're reading these, and it's like this is. <laughs> you're asking us to go and basically just get the crap beat out of us, for some guy we don't even know or care about. Yeah, some U.S. puppet probably. Like. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, and it was just, it was so ridiculous because they were like rubber bullets. You get four. I remember he would go four, and he goes, "What the." it was <laughs> we got your rubber bullets come here come here we got him right here <laughs> or rubber bullets and and i don't know if you've ever shot a rubber bullet but those suckers jam like nobody's business oh i, I can mean, imagine no i never have but i can imagine they're stupid regular I mean, bullets jammed enough i could just imagine the right rubber ones yeah. It's like, okay, oh, fantastic. Now, now not only will it get jammed, but it will make your gun explode. This is sweet. It's going to be fun. This is More incentive not to shoot it. You know, it's funny. They should, that's the, that's kind of what the, uh, maybe they should give that direction to the police. Not exactly, but maybe they should say, hey, make sure at least you're about to be fired on before yeah. you kill a kid with a fucking BB gun. Not anyway. <laughs> but oh. yeah, it's amazing. I, I, in military, because they know, this stuff could get so out of control. An international incident could just erupt, especially when that guy in Thailand, he's probably doing terrible things. He probably deserved to get ripped out of that palace. You know what I mean? And you're going to sit there at rubber bullets. Like the thought was, well, if we just show up, people will back down. <laughs> no, I hope no. so. But you know, you can't just, it's not like we're going to bluff with our lies. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, <laughs> you better, better stop that or I'll give you a nasty bruise. Well, at least four, four nasty, he bruises, and then all I could do is stand here. Oh, it was just—it was insane. Well, at least you didn't have to go. That's crazy. Well, we're getting to yeah. about that time. Um, that we should probably wrap her up. Uh, anything else you want to do? Uh, say or finish up on, or were we? Um, I have absolutely nothing going on. Uh, I, I said that pretty much what you see here. This is this <laughs> all day long. I just sit here and obsess over horrible stupid things online and then i go for a walk and try to convince myself it's not that bad <laughs> where are you right now in connecticut uh yeah yeah i'm in connecticut all right yeah me too yeah i've been trying to do that too i, I go walking at uh trails near um indian well and in shelton because it's not too far from my house and it's woodsy enough you know where and it's a steep enough climb so yeah, it's crazy. I see people out there with masks, and not and most people are pretty cool about it. They're just like whatever, but some people are really buying it. And I'm like, guys, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's crazy when you see people outdoors wearing them. It's like, okay, you. It's like God bless you. 
Yeah, especially once I like I you know talking to these doctors and they're saying, and you can even look it up, and even the guy from the who was it, the Surgeon General, was saying it's not healthy to wear a mask because you're breathing in your own stuff, you're breathing in your own uh, carbon dioxide all day. You know. Yeah, and whatever it is that you think you're actually stopping, you are probably just making it so it's easier because you're filtering out what would have it would have stayed in and fallen to the ground. Instead, you've now released it so that it's now even more easily airborne. Yeah. <laughs> it, and I'll <laughs> leave on this, but what I say to people is, uh, don't you think that all of humans would have died already if this was like such a... Like, wouldn't we have already died off from a virus, guys? Come on, man. Like, viruses aren't... Like, earlier you were saying, like, a virus gets killed by sunlight, and I wanted to be like, viruses aren't alive, <laughs> so they don't really... Become, they, they basically eradicated. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm just saying, like, people don't yeah. understand this point. And it's funny because if you think about it, maybe that's what all the zombie movies really meant. Maybe they're talking about these virus particles that were out there that people were infected by in their brains, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was great talking to you, Rodney. Uh, I feel much better now having talked to you than when I started this conversation. So um, thank that's you for great. that. <laughs> You're welcome. And I feel that way every time we come in contact, so that's great. Uh, everybody, check out Rodney Norman, all his stuff. He's really hilarious, funny, funny comedian. Um, where are you mostly active on Facebook, right? Uh, yeah, Facebook and uh, YouTube. I'm getting in. I'm, I'm getting actually to re I'm ready to relaunch my uh, podcast. Oh, all right. I had some up, but uh, I was doing it with other comedians, and uh, other comedians like to talk about things that. Uh, Let's just say I'm 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 generally a more clean, family friendly, mm. and most of the comedians I brought on were not. Okay, so I'm gonna relaunch my podcast. And do a few, a few other things. No, no. Look, I love everybody who helped me. You're wonderful, beautiful human beings, but you got potty mouths, and you need to take care of yourself. Well, if you ever need somebody, let me know. I, I work, I can work clean. I, you know, I'm a DJ for children sometimes also. I actually love, love working with kids, man. That, that's what makes this more even horrific because it, what's happening to these poor kids, you know? And I even see it like when I'm DJing the high school now, it's because I've been DJing for a while, for about 12, 10, 12 years now. And you see the change and it's like, they're just more separated and scared and, you know. Yeah, they're, yeah it's, they're not, they're not as friendly with each other. Yeah. Yeah. We're all just wrapped up with just the people they know on their online. They, that's become their whole world. Yeah, there's some hope out there though. My uh, my friend was at was picking up something. Um, I forget where she said she was from a store or something where they came to the car and gave it to her. A Target, yeah. And the lady was like, "Where's your mask?" They asked my friend, "Where's your mask?" And the kids in the back were like, "Mind your own business." And they're like seven to nine. I was like, yeah. Like, that's a great story you know let's end on that story that was a nice laugh but uh we should do this again soon and i'll definitely keep in touch and uh talk to you guys soon and you can always check me out more laws more problems.com that's my website comedylol.com is the other website if you'd like to support us on patreon or subscribe star all the information is there please send us money i'm not essential i need to eat bye everybody bye